Jason says, prayer request for the victims of the families in Maine and the children of that horrible man. There is a, that's what we're going to talk about. I, I, and, I, and I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed, I'm afraid. And so please, I, I hope you'll bear with me. But we're going to talk about um, some of the things that, that we're hearing from leaders. You know, first, let's just, let me, let me say this. Prayers are a wonderful thing. Thoughts and prayers are a wonderful thing. Uh, Lewiston, Maine experienced an awful tragedy and a tragedy very very similar to what we experienced here in Nova Scotia a few years ago and I guarantee you that there's a whole lot of people here in Nova Scotia that are just praying um, that, that, that they're, they're, they're praying really really hard and really really wonderfully for the folks in Lewiston and it means something thoughts and prayers are not you know oh well that's just it, it useless they're not because sometimes it's all we have all right. Sometimes that's all we can do is offer our thoughts and prayers. And for you out there that are praying and for you out there that are holding Lewiston in your heart and, and thinking about all the people who are impacted, empathizing with them, offering, you know, ex expressing and experiencing compassion for them. I love you. Keep going. It's wonderful. But we also have we have leaders in this world. And they can do more than offer thoughts and prayers. And that's where, like, when, when do we go, oh, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe we can do something about this. So with that idea of thoughts and prayers in mind, I want to read to you a prayer from, this comes from the, um, the Book of Common Prayer for the, Epistle, the Episcopal Church. It's a prayer for the human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations, all people may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayers matter. But, well, here's the first piece of scripture that came to mind today. Excuse me, came to mind yesterday comes from the book of James, uh, the letter of James, the fourth chapter, 17th verse. James is talking about helping people out. He's talking about, you know, he's talking to Christians and saying, hey, I, I, we need your help. The world needs your help. What do you, what do you so he says this, if anyone, excuse me, sorry, uh, it's, it's from the second chapter of James. Suppose a brother or sister is in need. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? Faith without action is dead. So Thursday, the new speaker of the house uh, said, this is a time for prayer. He's not wrong. It's a, it's a good, it's a good time for prayer. This is a wonderful time for prayer. Uh, prayer is always beneficial. In my estimation, prayer is always best beneficial. If not for those you're praying for, it does seem to bring the person who's uttering the prayers a certain amount of peace. So prayer is always good. A time of crisis, prayer, a time of anxiety, prayer can be a wonderful thing. But he's the speaker of the house now. I understand he's, he's a devout Christian, but he's the speaker of the house now. He is in a position of power. He is in a position of authority. He is in a position where they can make the necessary changes to, to, to the legal, to the, to the law, to the, to, they, they can make, they can bring about the necessary legislative action to make a difference. They can do that. And so thank you for your prayers, Mr. Speaker. But now I want to see your faith in action 
to help prevent these kinds of things from happening in the future. Appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your, your devotion. I appreciate your faith. I appreciate the love you have for God. And I appreciate your, uh, your connection and your relationship with Jesus and, and your desire to, to expand and, 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 and build that relationship even up even more. I, I love that. I think that's amazing. But you are now in a position of power and authority. You have a certain amount of sway. You can, um, you can lead. You can lead that entire house. You can lead that entire room full of legislators to, to action. So it's no longer just you're a man of faith and, and that's what you got. You're a man of faith who has a position of power. Now we want to see your faith going to work. We want to see your faith in action, making the world, making your country, making the world a safer place. That's where we are. And um, I, you know, I was thinking about oh, maybe I'll do a video. I, I don't have, I don't have it in me to do another video. Like I just wanted to speak off the cuff. And uh, and there you have it, James chapter two. Suppose a brother or sister is in need. If any one of you says, "Go in peace, keep warm, be well fed," but does nothing about it, does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? Faith without action is dead. Your nation's crying. People all over the country are crying out. A town, the latest, is a, a, a small city in southern Maine crying out. You can see your brothers and sisters in need. We're praying for you. It doesn't cut it anymore. Not, not from a person of such stature as the Speaker of the House. We're praying for you isn't enough anymore. We're going to meditate on this. We're going we're gonna to prayerfully discern this. Just doesn't cut it anymore. We need to see you at work doing what will help alleviate the need of your brothers and sisters. Amen.